Welcome to Shalmash Materials Analysis Laboratory, or CMAL for short. Uh, at CMAL is an open infrastructure, which means that anyone can use it. So we have people both from industry, but also from, of course, academia here. And we are five uh, senior research engineers, and we take care of around 20 instruments. And we mainly train and help users so that they can use the instruments themselves to get great results for their publications. And today we will show our most advanced transmission electron microscope, which is behind me, uh, or TM for short. Uh, but before the, we do that, uh, why do we need electron microscopes? Well, the reason is that uh, with a standard optical microscope, you can see smaller things than the wavelength of visible light. And this is around one hundredth of the width of one strand of hair on your head. But in electron microscopy, we use electrons to observe with, because electrons are not only particles, but according to quantum uh, physics, they're also waves. And the wavelength of electrons is much, much smaller than that of visible light. So then we can see smaller things. And in numbers, this means that we can magnify 10 or even up to 20 million times and thus easily see atoms. So the GOL near arm is this microscope over here. And it's a lot of things around, but if we just focus on the column where the electron beam is, we have, first of all, uh, we have a electron gun at the top here. So it emits a small tip, which emits electrons, and then they are accelerated to around 70% of the speed of light. Then we have different electromagnetic lenses and apertures. Uh, and then a sample go inside here, which is a sample holder. And then the electrons, so the sample is here, and the electrons go through the samples. It's transmission electron microscopy. In a scanning electron mi microscope, then you have a bulk sample, and then the beam interacts with the sample at the s and then is emitted from the surface. So transmission, uh, electron microscopy, the sample goes through, the electrons go through, and then they are scattered, and then you can uh, detect them down here and to get an image. And this TM is truly advanced. It's one of a kind in the world. It has different cameras to obtain uh, uh, different types of images. Uh, it has high-class uh, detectors and spectrometers, so you can analyze the energies of the electrons. And you can also detect X-rays, uh, uh, which are generated from the electrons. Um, you also have, um, and with these techniques, you can actually see what element your sample comprises of. Uh, so you can get chemical analysis. So you can even do optical, uh, see the optical properties uh, on atomic level of your material. And uh, we also have in situ TM holders and these so-called in situ TM holders, then you have a TM holder and then you apply a stimuli on your sample. So then you can see how the sample is changing while you apply the stimuli. And the stimuli can be electric field, it can be force, uh, it can be temperature, light, um, gas or liquid. And to really see on the atomic level how your sample is changing while you apply the stimuli is, is truly uh, fascinating. Uh, and the sample requirements for the TM is that um, it has to fit inside the, the TM sample holder, which means a diameter of 3 millimeter. It should be electron transparent, which means no more than 200 nanometers or 0.2 micrometers about. And it's sample dependent. Uh, it should also be conductive and it sits in this column, which is high vacuum and is bombarded by these high energetic electrons. Uh, as I said before, 70% of the speed of light. Uh, so usually a very soft organic material is not good, but there are workarounds for this as well. But all other or most other uh, materials can be used inside the TM. And then why do we want to use TM in, in research? Well, the reason is that to fully understand uh, a material, you need to understand it, how it behaves on an atomic level. So you need to study the atomic structure and see how it uh, changes on an atomic level. Uh, for example, what happens if you combine two elements, will it have different properties? And what happens on atomic level if you apply an electric field, will it, how will it move or change? Uh, and when you understand how a material behaves on atomic level, then you can tailor the material so it will have those novel properties that you're looking for in your sample or material. Uh, and then we can have uh, new solar cells or environmentally friendly batteries, uh, catalyst detectors, sensors, um, better drug delivery systems, and so on. Uh, well, this can be invented. And these are some of the results that you can get with the, with the TM. Um, of course, TM is, um, 
it's, in, it's a difficult instrument, uh, but at CML we can, within one day, so less than one day's training, we can guide you so that you can use our entry-level TM. Um, and to get atomic resolution or to see the atomic structure of a sample, usually a couple of hours of TM is enough. Of course, some, some experiments require much more work than this. Um, and we're actually standing, the, the microscope in this, in, is in this room, but we control it from the adjacent room over here because our body temperature uh, and when we talk will affect our solution. And this is how sensitive it is. So if we move over to the next room, I will also turn off the light here and close the door. And then we have one of our expert users, which is uh, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hello. So Andy will show us some uh, amazing results um, which he has obtained with his microscope. Yes. So I'll demonstrate a little um, live view of some imaging and talk about some of the more advanced results we can achieve um, with this instrument. Today we'll be looking at a 2D material. The most famous 2D material is graphene made from graphite, which are these flakes, flat flakes that can be thinned, that can be atomically thin. Today we're not looking at graphene, we're looking at a different type of 2D material, a semiconducting 2D material called a TMDC or a transition metal dichalcogenide material, tungsten disulfide. Right now we have a live view image of this semiconducting TMDC flake. We're actively researching these materials for their optical and electronic properties. So the bright area in the image is the material and it's these big flat flake that's thin enough for the electrons to go through. Right now we have around 20,000 times magnification, um, but we can easily in this scanning transmission electron microscope image increase the magnification. You can see the features are getting bigger and bigger. So you can see here we have a, uh, the flake has two different thicknesses and we will zoom in on the thinner area. And so now we're at 500,000 times magnification. But it might be that we have some drift since I just were in the room and that's going to affect the, the resolution, but we'll see. Yeah. And now we're at 2 million times magnification. And if you look closely, you can start to see some patterns emerging in the image. And now we're at 10 million, 12 million, 15 million times magnification. And I'll take a little bit slower image so we have a better uh, signal to noise ratio. And you can clearly see we have these bright dots. Each one of these bright dots is a column of atoms running through the, the thickness of the sample. And you can see that the atoms arrange themselves into these hexagonal structures. How these atoms pack together really determines its electronic and optical properties. We can determine a lot of the structural information directly from the atomic resolution image. But another way we can analyze uh, materials in this microscope is through diffraction or the momentum transfer from the sample to the electrons. So this is a live view convergent beam electron diffraction pattern. You can see some kind of symmetric shapes appearing. If we do a more careful uh, acquisition of this data, we can achieve patterns that look like this. These are absolutely gorgeous geometric patterns. These types of patterns can provide a, a lot of information about your sample, um, the crystal structure, the phase, um, whether the material is strained, um, how thick the sample is. There's an, an immense amount of information we can get from these uh, uh, convergent beam electron diffraction patterns. So there's a little bit about imaging and diffraction. Another uh, tech, the other types of techniques we can use this instrument for is spectroscopy. We have two different types of spectroscopy in this instrument. Uh, uh, electron energy loss spectroscopy, or EELS, where we measure the amount of energy the electrons lose as they pass through the sample. And we can also do X-ray spectroscopy, X-ray EDS, energy dispersive spectroscopy, where we can measure the X-rays that are emitted from the sample. Now, both of these techniques can be used to uh, determine what elements are present in our sample um, to figure out composition. We can do this on a very low magnification and just generally see where elements are in our material. But we can also do this um, with ultimate spatial resolution, atomic spatial resolution. And this is, a, is an example from a different type of crystal. This is strontium titanate. So this image here is the stem image, the same type of stem image you were seeing in live view here. 
But in this time, we have strontium columns and titanium columns that form a certain crystal structure. To determine which column is which, which ones are strontium and titanium, we collect the x-rays that are emitted from each column, and we can produce maps like this, where these are the x-rays collected from titanium, and these are the ones from strontium. And if we create an overlay image, where we put in the titanium atoms as red, and the strontium columns as green, you can see they're not registered, that there really are pure um, strontium columns and pure titanium columns. And this gives us a lot of insight into its crystal structure, where the elements are, and the resulting properties um, from, from these different materials. Now, eels can be used to access a lot more information about your sample than just composition. Um, for 2D materials, we're interested in looking at their electronic structure and their optical properties. Um, for the electronic structure in these TMDCs, uh, they're dominated by so-called excitons. Um, here, we're looking at an eels spectrum from the sample that's in the microscope. On the x-axis, we have energy loss. And what the electrons can do is go in and lose energy to exciting different excitons. These excitons are electron hole pairs, which are bound together in the crystal. And there's different types of excitons that have different energies. So you see different peaks here um, in the 2 to 3 eV range. Uh, Ludwig mentioned phonons, which are collective oscillations. Uh, collective um, vibrational modes of a crystal structure. Here's an example from hexagonal boron nitride, which is an, a different type of 2D material, which where we can see phonons. This is an electrical insulator, so it has a very large band gap. You see no electronic structure in the eel spectra until you get to 6 eV, which is its band gap. And then at very low energies, I'll do it, at very low energies at around 200 milli electron volt, you can see a peak here, and this is a signature from the pho phonon vibrational mode of a hexagonal boron nitride. Different crystal structures have different vibrational modes, and this would result in a peak at a different position. So eels is very uh, important for understanding phonons as well. And then we can look at an example that's a little bit more complicated spectrum. This is an eel spectrum from a nanopatterned patterned TMDC material um, that was nano patterned here in the Chalmers clean room, where we make these small disks and these small um, TMDC disks, this is tungsten disulfide, um, can produce very complicated nano-optical modes. Uh, and we can measure the energy of these modes and spatially um, around the disk where they are excited. Fields, which is a very unique uh, capability of a, a, um, a characterization tool. Um, so there's a few examples of using the Joel NeoArm for some more advanced uh, research activities. Yeah, so thank you very much, Anna, for these amazing results, what uh, this instrument can do. And uh, we hope you found this video useful, and we also hope to see you soon uh, in the lab. Thank you. Thank you.